1987's Dream Warriors is hands down the best Nightmare on Elm Street sequel. Not counting New Nightmare, which is the greatest horror movie of all time, but that's a story for another day. <laughs> Dream Warriors was like a breath of fresh air after the relatively disappointing Freddy's Revenge. Co-written by original Elm Street creator Wes Craven, the film follows our favorite dream-stalking psychopath Freddy as he takes his deadly crusade away from Elm Street to a psychiatric hospital for troubled teens. This film has the best death scenes of the series, the best Freddy quips, and the kid characters are actually likable. Everything about this movie is near perfect. But let's stop for a moment. Let's talk about the third entry of the Elm Street franchise that almost was. A little movie called Freddy's Funhouse. After Freddy's revenge left a bad taste in everybody's mouth, the powers that be were determined to get things back on track. And he seemed open to just about anything. Enter Freddy Krueger himself, Mr. Robert England, who wrote his very own treatment for a film. In a 1987 issue of Fangoria magazine, actor went into detail. Basically, the plot begins with the sister of Tina Gray, last seen in the original Elm Street whispering through a body bag. Tina's sister is away at school and having horrible dreams about what happened to her sibling, as you could imagine. Filled with grief, she makes her way back to Springwood to get to the bottom of what really happened. She looks through newspaper clippings, microfilm, and even television footage, including some footage of Freddy on the city hall steps with his lawyers after he got off from his original case. We would see something similar to this in the inaugural episode of Freddy's Nightmare around the same time. No, no, no! <laughs> Don't be afraid! This time, it isn't one of your nightmares. This one was mine. He was found in this dumpster a block away from his home. Victim number seven, six-year-old Bobby Doyle. We were able to identify him through his dental records. <laughs> Attorney for the defense, do you wish to present evidence for admission? I do, Your Honor. I have but one exhibit. Due to new evidence, I've just recently been made aware of and moved for dismissal of the case. The evidence presented to this court was obtained during an illegal arrest. Not in compliance with the Supreme Court's ruling on the rights of the accused. With great regret, I must grant defense's motion to dismiss. We would see Anglin playing Freddy as this disgusting janitorial Lee Harvey Oswald type. We would also be introduced to an oriental parapsychologist. Not unlike the guys from the Entity or Poltergeist. Anglin described the guy like a teenage John Lone. And with this character, they would explore the material that encouraged Wes Craven to write the first movie to begin with. Cambodians who were dying in their dreams after they had come to the Midwest. Yeah, Nightmare on Elm Street was inspired by, um, I think, three articles in the LA Times over a period of about a year and a half. Um, the first one was kind of sketchy, and it was the story of a, of a young man dying um, after having a severe nightmare. And they couldn't figure out how it happened medically. And then there was a second story about nine months later, and nobody, the newspaper didn't seem to correlate it. They didn't seem to remember the other story. And then the third story, and the one that really made me feel that I have to write a script about this, was um, this kid. And all these kids were Asian, all of them were Southeast Asia, all had come out of uh, kind of war zones from Vietnam and, and Pol Pot, the, you know, the culling fields. And their families had gone through location camps and then it ended up in the United States. Um, this kid was having nightmares and he said somebody's after me in my nightmare and if I sleep I know I'm going to die and his, his father was a physician um, and he said I'll give you sleeping pills you'll be alright we've come through a horrible time now we're in America you're safe uh, and uh, the father started giving the kid sleeping pills and the kid supposedly was taking them but he stayed up and he stayed up for something like five days it was like an amazing just you know, keeping himself awake almost by putting matchsticks in his eyes. <clears throat> and then finally he fell asleep while the family was watching television. And they took him upstairs and put him in bed and uh, the 
the parents later said that you know, we were all convinced that the crisis was over. And um, in the middle of the night, they heard screaming and thrashing and ran into his room, and he was like kicking and screaming, and they got to him, and he just fell dead, and he was dead. And uh, there were three things that really just made me think this is a movie. One was they did an autopsy on him, and nothing was wrong. There was no physical reason for it. The second was that they found, the family said they found all the sleeping pills that supposedly he had taken uh, hidden. So he had obviously put them in his mouth and when dad wasn't looking it was right back out because he didn't want to sleep. And the third thing was this incredible thing, this kid had run an extension cord behind his bedroom curtains and into the closet and he had a Mr. Coffee in there with black coffee. So he had a source of keeping awake even when he was in his room supposedly sleeping. And it was just, a, it was heartrending because this kid he was right, you know. He died as soon as he fell asleep. The story also dealt with a mixed race couple having the parapsychologist get involved with the sister and had Freddy play on that in their nightmares. The title of the script was Freddy's Fun House because Freddy has booby trapped the Nightmare House's dreamscape. It's like Freddy's own demented art direction mindset of the house's interior, like a carnival's madhouse, but with all the debris and rubbish of the prior movies lying around bloody children's dresses, and all of Freddy's macabre toys. England admits that while his story had potential, he didn't really have an ending. He opted for a quote, David Cronenberg ending, which seems to just be another way of saying an ending that was completely nuts. And what would be so wrong with that? One cool idea England had was that after a character would wake up from a nightmare, they would write down everything they had seen and then work with other kids so that when they went into the dreamscape, they could hide weapons to use against Freddy. All of this was moot once they convinced Wes Craven to come back to the series. Sure, he only wrote an initial draft of what would become the Dream Warrior script, but it was more than enough to get the ball rolling. And thank goodness that things turned out the way they did, or else we may not have had the Wizard Master, or the return of Nancy, or Freddy turning a kid into a human puppet using his own veins and tendons, or Freddy posing as a turned on nurse. And we wouldn't have had the best Freddy line of all time. And we also want to have had this. We uh, can't actually play the song, but we all know what the song is, and we all know that it's awesome. Hey, Robert, let's go back to Sagas. Yeah, right. It's so warm. <laughs> it's so warm, yeah. Sagas has a mask. Saugus, we filmed the video, it was like 24, 25 Mass. degrees. This is Saugus, Massachusetts. Right? No, no, Saugus. Saugus as in as in rednecks. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. We all went to like the liquor store in full makeup. Oh, they like that. Real big. Yeah. I'd like a burrito. Yeah. <laughs> he should have gone to the liquor store in full makeup. <laughs> oh, good, we got a little more light on here. Ooh, out of pale, bags under my eyes. It was a long chin's flight. Chin's dirty. My chin's dirty, yeah. <laughs> People are gonna, this is going to think it's really weird in the beard. Cliff said I didn't have to shave for this, so I didn't. Okay, that looks good. Okay, here we go. Camera two in three, two. Hi, I'm Don Dockin. And I'm Jeff Pilson. And we've got a new song. In fact, it's the title track to Nightmare on Elm Street 3. It's called Dream Warriors, and Freddie said if we came by, he'd play it for us. But as you can see... <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, I fucked up. So. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> okay, one more time from the top. Okay? In three, two. Hi, I'm Don Dockin. And I'm Jeff Pilson. And we've got a new song. In fact, it's the title track to Nightmare on Elm Street 3. It's called Dream Warriors. And Freddie said if we came by, he'd play it for us. But as you can see, he's not around. So let's do a few commercials and see if we can find where he hid the video. Hi. Clear. Okay, that's great.